Misinformation is when something is said on the internet but is completely false. Even scientists have proven these things to be incorrect, but people still think they're true. Misinformation can be about many things, like a price of a dress, to farming, to even misinformation about misinformation. But right now, I'm going to be focusing on misinformation about farming, farming and agriculture. To dig in deeper about misinformation, farmers do have some good news. They have found out how much damage misinformation has done to their industry. The bad news is, the way society was trying to fight misinformation might actually be increasing the consumer opposition to actual facts rather than elevating it. We've been misformed about fighting misinformation. Vaccines and autism is a good related case that is strongly affected by misinformation. The claim that autism was caused by cancer was first said 18 years ago based on a single study of just 12 children in the United Kingdom. Further clinical studies disproved this correlation multiple times. Yet today, one third of US parents still believe that vaccines are linked to autism, which is why measles, once they were almost eradicated, struck again. The response to stop incorrect beliefs have been totally ineffective. There are so many different reasons why people will cling on to misinformation and why they won't give up on their opinions, even though they might be scientifically discredited. First, not many people like being wrong, so they, was, they will seek out information, aka misinformation, that proves they've been right all along. This is the confirmation bias. It's all, also, it's easier to reinforce your beliefs with misinformation. The confirmation bias can rarely be defeated by actual facts, evidence, and data. People will simply decline all information that disproves the misinformation that they are using as a basic worldview. They will embrace any misinformation that they have found or heard that supports what they think everyone should know, even though it might not be true. Mm -hmm. Now to the misinformation about, about farming. I'm going to start with a story that you all should think about. I want you to think about a pig. Think a pig is standing in front of you. I also want you to think that the, these pigs are 12 to 16 weeks old. Say the owner of the farmer comes along and they give all their pigs 4 liters of water and 0.3 kilograms of food per day. I also want you to think that they have 10 pigs per pen. Sure, they're being treated equally, but with this next statement to actually how they're treated, it might change your mind. Farmers give their 12 to 16 week old pigs 2 kilograms of food and they give them 6 to 8 liters of water. Farmers care for their family, their animals like family members. They are very important to a farmer. Linking on to that, animal care is something that not all people really understand. There are lots of myths and things that are not true out there, and that's not so good. The Canadian Centre for Integrity Food Trust 2018 Public Trust Research reports that 61% of Canadians are unsure if Canadian meat is obtained by humanely treated animals. I'm going to play a short, quick, easy game with you. How we're going to play is I'm going to say a myth, then a fact, then the truth. So here we go. Farmers do not care for their animals. Here's a fact. The farmers are constantly working to ensure that their animals are healthy and content by providing them with the best care available. When caring for animals, farmers take their responsibilities seriously and most commonly enjoy doing so. Not only is caring for animals in the right way the right thing to do, it's also good business practice. Because comfortable and healthy animals are more productive and produce higher quality products. That's why Canadian farmers are always striving to improve animal care and proudly invest in research that will help the understanding of their animals' needs. Another myth is that there are no standard practices for caring for farm animals. Here's a fact. There are national codes of practice that outline how different animals are to be raised and cared for on farms. The truth is the same to all animal owners. Farmers must follow laws for humane treatment. However, in Canada, there are also national codes of practice for different livestock and poultry animals. Animal abuse is another kind of myth that's going around. But the weird thing is, people still believe it's true even though animal abuse of any kind is against the law. Animal abuse is never okay under any circumstance. Like pet owners, farmers and ranchers 
have to be responsible for properly and humanely caring for their animals. These tasks are supported by the federal criminal code and provincial animal care legislations. Animal abuse is very rare, but when it does happen, can Canadian farmers are part of the solution. Another myth is that when transporting animals from place to place, it causes undue pain and suffering for the animal. Animal care practices are just as critical on the road as they are at home. Ensuring that the animal is humanely treated doesn't end when the animal leaves the farm. Federal regulations detail rules for transporting animals when it is, for example, unfit for travel, requirements for food and water, and how many animals can be traveling together as a group. Some people think it is unhumane to keep animals inside barns. But in fact, keeping certain animals inside barns can keep them safe and healthy. Farmers use Farmers use different construction options some, for different animals. Some of the grazing animals, animals that pasture, animals such as cows, go outside year-round. Many others are mainly kept inside, such as pigs and chickens. They are mainly kept inside to ensure their well-being and protect them from predators, diseases, and extreme weather. People believe that there is no need for animal agriculture in the future. We use animal products on an everyday basis. For protein, not only for ourselves, but for our pets too. We get all sorts of medicines and other everyday products from farm animals. Therefore, there will always be a need for animal agriculture. Other misinformation spread on the internet includes pollination of crops and plants by bees. People believe that bees and other are the only pollinators of our crops and other food products. But in fact, soybean and soybeans and corn are self-pollinating plants. Lots of other plants are pollinated by bugs and butterflies. When farmers put insecticides on their crops, they are specifically targeted towards certain pests, such as a secret maggot, a maggot that can kill the plant, and if the plant is fed to a cow, the cow could die, and that's sad for a farmer. And nicomites have been blamed for reducing bee populations. When the burrow mite, and harsh winters have weakened the bee populations even more than nicomites. And by the way, the varro mite is a mite that will go onto the bee's back and suck the blood until the bee dies. Another myth in agriculture is that genetically modified organisms, also known as GMOs, are unhealthy. In fact, GMOs are one of the most controlled food products on the market. It takes about 13 years of research and $136 million in testing before a new GMO seed is approved. There have been extensive studies proving that consuming GMOs is completely safe. Some people claim that GMO food contains fewer nutrients than natural food. Genetic engineering of crops tends to focus on making the crop more resistant to pests and diseases, while at the same time increasing the crop's yield. This process reduces the needs to use pesticides and herbicides on the GMO product. This makes them safer and healthier to eat and safer for the environment. The process of creating GMOs does not affect the plant's nutritional value. In fact, studies show that GMOs are GMO foods are equally as nu nutritious as their natural counterparts. One of the worst myths out there is that GMO foods cause cancer. Like that one study that linked vaccines to autism there was, about seven years ago, only one study that linked GMO food, food products to cancer there was, and this study was disproven many times, and it was also done on rats. Like most cancer studies, they're done on rats, but Rats can have different digestive systems, and it, the rats could have been sensitive to the food from the start. In conclusion, as you, as you have heard throughout my talk, there are plenty of misinformation out there running free. I hope I have dispelled some of these myths in a short period of time today. I have chosen this topic because I live on a farm, and when I hear something that's not true about farming and agriculture, I always get the urge to say that's not true, but it would be rude to do it for a guest speaker. To make people aware of misinformation out there, I would probably take action by doing it social media awarenesses through posts on Facebook and Instagram, especially because misinformation is most commonly spread through social media. 
That's, this was my talk, When It's Not True, It's Not True, which was on farming and misinformation of farming and agriculture. Thank you.